Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to The Daily Race. So glad to have you here as we are kicking off our day. The goal today is not to run a marathon. We are not sprinting. We are just taking one step forward in our relationship with God. We're being intentional. And every day, learning a little bit more about Jesus, about the scriptures, and how that applies to our life. What do we need to do in light of that? So what we're doing over this next few weeks is we are taking a look at what happened after the resurrection. So between the resurrection and when Jesus uh, went back and at the ascension went back to, to heaven, what happened? What happened in that 40, 50 days that, that took place there? So we're going to read here. Uh, we read yesterday that the women went down to the tomb. Jesus wasn't there. Uh, they are running back to tell the rest of the disciples. God chose to uh, reveal himself and let the, the women be the first eyewitnesses to the resurrection. Uh, and then it says here in verse 3, it says, Peter and the other disciple started out for the tomb. So who's, who's the other disciple? We're in John chapter 20. This is John. John never referred to himself as John. He referred to himself as the other disciple or uh, most famously, the disciple that Jesus loved, which is kind of a funny way to refer yourself. Um, but that's the way he referred to himself. So Peter and the other disciple started out for the tomb. They were both running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. I, I love this part of it. <laughs> this really isn't essential to the story that John beat Peter on that run that morning. It's not important to anyone except to John. John beat Peter on that day. I, maybe they had this thing going on where they'd race different places and John finally won that day, or maybe John always won and he just wanted it recorded in the gospel. We're, we're not quite sure, uh, but I, I love the fact that, <laughs> that he included that in there. Uh, John is fast. At least he was fast on this morning. Or or Peter's really slow. We don't know. There's no more context given to this. We just know on this one day, John beat Peter in a race to the tomb. It says this, <laughs> He stooped and looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. So John went, looked in, saw the linen wrappings, didn't go in. Then Simon Peter arrived and went inside, which kind of fits with Peter's personality, right? Like nothing, nothing slows him down. Let's go in. Let's check this out. Let's investigate it. He goes into the tomb. He also noticed the linen wrappings, wrappings lying there. Um, but he, uh, while the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings, then the disciples who had reached the tomb, then the disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For until then. They hadn't understood the scriptures that said that Jesus must rise from the dead. And then they went home. Now, that's going to be a theme over the next week here, as Jesus is revealing himself to people. The people begin to believe about the resurrection after they see Jesus alive. That it's these eyewitness accounts. They begin connecting his words to what actually took place. Oh, you meant a real resurrection. Jesus, to his closest disciples, had literally said, we're going to Jerusalem, I'm going to be put to death, and on the third day, I will rise again. Most crowds only heard it in a little bit more obscure language. Jesus talked about the sign of Jonah. Uh, that will be my ultimate sign to show that I am the Messiah. I will give you the sign of Jonah. What is that exactly? What is a story, an account about a man being swallowed by a fish and being inside it for three days and three nights and then coming out alive? What, what does that have to do with a sign you're going to do? Well, when you get to the resurrection, you're like, oh, three days in the tomb, three nights out alive. Okay, I get it. And Jesus also told the religious leaders, I will destroy this temple and rebuild it in three days. Destroy the This temple took, way long. It took forever to build. This wasn't built in, in three days. There's no way you could build it in three days. Unless Jesus wasn't talking about the physical temple there. He was talking about his body. And that in three days, it would be rebuilt. So once again, they're beginning to make all of these connections to what Jesus said, to what Jesus taught, to what was taking place. And I think that the important thing here to remember is that, that faith, <laughs> these guys that we consider men and women of great, great faith, these first generation Christians, these saints uh, of the faith, um, had a lot of doubt. We can beat ourselves up if we, when we have doubts. We can beat ourselves up when we have a hard time believing or, or don't trust God in certain situations. Give yourself a break. If you're struggling today, if you're having some doubts, you're not the only one. 
These people who were closest to Jesus had doubts, had struggle believing, had a struggle having faith. But, but here's the key, is that they continued to move close to Jesus. That you can go to Jesus with your doubts. You can take steps forward and still have doubts. It doesn't have to derail you. It doesn't have to, to take you completely off track. There are going to be seasons in your life where there's slow growth, and then there's going to be seasons in your life where you're, you're running to the tomb at full speed, trying to beat your best friend to get there, uh, to have a moment of, of transformational growth. It doesn't come in a steady stream. It, it doesn't come regular. Uh, but it does come if we're intentional. It does come if each and every day we wake up and intend to take one step forward. God honors that. And even in a season maybe of some dryness, God will come through. God is present. Now you will come out of that season and take a step moving forward. So we're going to look a little bit more about these early reveals. As Jesus appears to the different disciples, their reactions, what he's asking to do, that's going to be our goal over the next couple of weeks. So let's start our day together now. Let's pray and let's get ready for the day. God, we come to you this morning and we thank you so much just for another day, another day of life, another day to serve you, another day to uh, grow closer to you, uh, another day to show people uh, your hope and your love. God, I pray for those right now who are sick. God, I think of those who have been struggling with long-term illnesses and short-term illnesses. God, uh, people who might be waking up this morning just, just feeling the weight of of that illness, of that disease. God, I pray for energy. God, I pray for, for restoration. God, we pray for ultimate healing as well. And we just ask that you would just continue to, to guide each of us and, and lead us. We thank you for, for what you did uh, this past Easter. Not only did you rise from the grave, not only did you save us, God, but uh, you brought so many people into uh, the church, not only Palm Valley, but many churches uh, have seen numbers, saw numbers that they haven't seen in, in years, God. We thank you for sending that wave. God, we pray for, as we uh, get ready for this next week uh, that we would just once again set the table for guests, God, that as people come back uh, to church, uh, return from Easter, uh, that this would begin to develop a habit in their life, uh, that they might grow closer to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, well, hey, I hope you have a great rest of the day, and I look forward to seeing you right back here 24 hours from now on The Daily Race. Love you guys.